Hi there, this is the third video um, in conjunction with the using the database step of the Joomla tutorial developing an MVC component. Now in the first couple of videos on this step we set up the database table, our hello world table with its messages in it, and we changed the site functionality so that it displayed the appropriate message whenever the um, ID came through in the URL. And in this final step, we want to change the admin functionality so that we can allow the admin to, to select the message uh, depending upon the messages that are in the database. Now, at the moment, what we have in our Joomla site, we've got these links set up. We've got our goodbye world link, and it's going to our hello world component. But the messages here... Um, that he can choose from are really hard coded. And if you remember, those are hard coded within our default XML file associated with the um, layout. And here they are here hello world and goodbye world. And there's a space in the middle there, which we don't have in the database. So that's what we want to change so that those options are selected from the database rather than being hard coded. Now remember that the type of our field here is list. So if we go forward to our standard form field types, uh, we can see that list. And what we want to change now is we want to change that to allow us to select one of our hello world messages. And to do that, we have to create a custom form field type. And there's this page of documentation which describes it quite well. And if you go down to here, um, it talks about subclassing a JFORM field and providing some functions. But in particular cases, you don't need to select a subclass JFORM field. You can subclass a subclass of that. And it says, particularly if your form field type is a list, please, please subclass JFORM field list. And if we go down to our section adding a new field type and we look at our code that's what this is subclassing here so it tells you what we need to do uh, we don't really need to do the j import statement but we do need this line j form helper to load the class we then need to also override the get options code and also we need to tell Joomla that when we're uh, setting up this custom type, this is the place that we're going to, uh, that Joomla is going to find the definition of that class. So going back to our code. Here we have our change to the layout file. We're changing it so that the type is hello world. It's a custom field type. We're adding this line to tell Joomla you'll find the definition of hello world in this particular folder. And we're going to write, write this um, file here, which will have the definition of this particular type. So let's get started. We'll change this um, XML file first of all. So we'll change that. Oops. To that. And we'll change this then needs to be hello world. And we'll get rid of the default there. And we'll get rid of these two lines with the options in as well. And that should hopefully be the same as what we've got here. Okay, we've got this new file here, which we're going to copy and paste into a new file here. And we're going to save this in the directory admin models fields hello world.php. So we are in admin now we need to create a new directory here models 
And then a new one here. Fields. Hello world.php. That's that. And as we've added a new directory there, we need to change our manifest file to tell Joomla now to include files from that new directory. So if we find out where our manifest file here, this is the new folder that we need to tell it about this models folder. So we'll just copy that in through. Oops. and save that and hopefully that should be everything ready we'll zip up our code and we'll call this 6c we'll go on to Joomla and we'll install this version Good, successful. Now when we go to our menus and go to main menu and add a new menu item, we should be able to select our Hello World component. And then the possible messages are Hello World and Goodbye World. You see there's no space there, so it means it's got that from the database rather than it being hard-coded. So that is all working fine. Um, let's look in a bit more detail at our code here in this file. And if we look at our get options, we've got our second way of accessing the database here. And this is known as JDatabase. And there's a Joomla page here with the documentation on JDatabase, which is really very good. Um, if you've done any SQL programming um, from, from code, uh, this shouldn't be too unfamiliar to you. We've got a database, getting a handle on the database there. We're then building a query, SQL query. We're then kind of uh, processing that query, parsing it and uh, running it. And then that should give us a cursor whereby we can then load the results into our own code. So if we compare our code with that, we've got the database handle here. We're building the query here. We're then processing the query in this set query. And then we're um, loading the results of the query into our own variables here. And you can look through this in a bit more detail. Um, lots of good stuff, lots of ways of copying the data into our own variables here. Um, so all that should be fairly straightforward. Um, then the only other thing which is a bit confusing here is this line here. What does this what does colon colon underscore mean? Well, if we forget about the underscore for a minute, we can see it says JHTML colon colon, which really indicates this is a class. And what we're talking about here is running a method, and it's going to be a static method of this class. So if we go to our Joomla documentation, we can actually look up the JHTML class. And we see, lo and behold, there's an underscore method. And you do find underscore methods in a number of uh, Joomla classes. This one, um, well, doesn't really explain very well what it's about. But Stack Overflow comes to our rescue here. And this is actually Stack Exchange. Uh, there's a question, what does JHTML colon colon underscore do? And there's a good answer here, which really says that uh, if you've got something like this, then this is equivalent to taking the first parameter and putting it there, capitalizing the first letter, and running this static um, method within that class. So if we compare our own code here, where we've got jhtml colon colon underscore and it's select 
dot option. So you might expect that that would be equivalent to jhtml select and running the option method within that. And if we go to, we can find jhtml select and we can go down and there's the option method when we're passing the value and the text. So what we're really doing in this bit here, we've got an options array and we are generating the options information which fits within an HTML select statement or a select tag. So if we go back to here um, and try to set up a menu item, this bit here is going to be within a, an HTML select tab and these select tag and these are the various options. So we need a, a message uh, text here plus an associated value. So when we're looking at this, we need a value here and the associated text. So you might like to try yourself, change this line here into JHTML select and the option and then pass the the message and the value and the text there and just check that it works okay. Okay, that's it for this step. Hopefully that's been useful. Thanks very much for watching.